because I know that at this point you've got to just be beside yourself. You've been going through this what for about five years now and I think at this point you're just like I've had enough. It's time to start changing the system. Yes. And how would you change it? I mean, give me some examples of what you might do, some suggestions to others. First thing I would do is I'd stop putting these kids' lives in the hands of one person being the judge. Mm -hmm. Somebody that can just bluntly ignore everything, ignore mm -hmm. all the facts. Um, you know, he can he can be corrupted, you know, by, you know, the, the powers that be, mm -hmm. um, I would totally do do away with that entire system. Mm -hmm. I feel like a jury trial should be mandatory throughout the entire family court. Mm -hmm. That way we can at least get the facts out there and have the facts actually weighed mm -hmm. and then come back with an actual decision that's best for the children. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, like there's no mothers, there's no fathers actually making these decisions. Right. And the judges are not putting themselves in that situation. Right. They, they can't think of, you know, what if this happens to me? Right. Of course, if the shoe's on the other foot, right. you want somebody to treat you fairly and look at your case fairly. Right. So I, I, I'd first have every court, every every one of these trials go to a jury trial. Yeah. yeah. That way, you know, we can actually make sure that the facts are being weighed and, and, and the kids are being at the forefront of it all. Mm -hmm. And it's not financial gains. The jurors mm -hmm. are not going to get paid for it. They don't, they don't have anybody telling them, hey, you need to go this way because your salary is attached to this. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that that, that that's for me is probably the, the most important part. Okay. Just, just walking in and knowing that there's, there's going to be somebody here that's actually going to look at this thing fairly. Do you think uh, there's been a lot of people in the state of Texas that say that the whole thing about the standard possession order, you know, here you are, you've been given the standard protection order, standard possession order, right. which basically means you become a visitor to right. your children. Absolutely. Uh, the big thing about being a visitor, though, is because you are a visitor, you get to pay child support and the state gets to make money off of you. Right. So these attorneys will try to say, well, you know what, we need to have the standard possession order. It creates conflict. The attorney general, the, the governor, our, our entire state wants this standard possession order because it makes a lot of money, millions and millions of dollars for right. the state. But really, the standard possession order is very seldom that which is best for the children because the children are already suffering trauma. For right. example, if, if the mother and the father do split apart, that's trauma. Yes. Because the, you know what they should know and what many of the children have known is that mother and father are together. Mm -hmm. You take them apart and they're already experiencing trauma. And then a standard possession order says, you know what, father or mother, um, now you become a visitor and the child's like, not only do I lose my family, but now I only get to see my father or my mother every other weekend and maybe a couple of hours during the week. And it, it, it becomes very trauma-inducing to the children. So what some people are suggesting, and I'm not, you know, what, what your thoughts are about this, is that there should be a presumption of 50-50 parenting. Yes. Because even though there's still trauma, there is still trauma. Um, that this might be one way to help alleviate the trauma by having a 50-50, at least a presumption of 50-50. Right. Uh, I think that there are other factors that should be involved in it as well, um, you know, that, that may say, you know what, this may be the presumption, but this should not be the case for right now. We want to have both parents involved, but right now by mandate, one parent becomes a visitor, and this is the problem. So, I mean, what are your thoughts about the 50-50 shared parenting thing? I think that it's, that's the that should be the standard. Mm -hmm. I think that it should be 50-50 unless you can pro prove one or the other to be unfit. Mm -hmm. If the other one is one fit, then you should go to right. first, third, and fifth. Right. But, like, to alienate one parent or the other yeah. is just unacceptable. So, and, and, and I think that the reason I'm asking a little bit about this is because you mentioned for yourself, your mm -hmm. father... I don't know what happened with the dynamics between your mother and father, but for 19 years of your life, mm -hmm. you had no father in your life. And it caused anger. Yes. It caused trauma. I mean, you can look at study after study of what happens in the majority of people that have the loss of a parent, be it father or mother. The, um, the increase in the rate of drug abuse, of suicide attempts, of abortions, of dropping out of school, of 
being involved in gang activity, going into mm -hmm. being incarcerated, of never achieving a higher level of income because the dynamics around them have been mm -hmm. oppressing them and the trauma that it's been inducing to them have even caused things like health problems. Right. Um, so I wanted to, to, to open up that up to you in part because of your own background. Right. And what you went through, I am sure you don't want to see inflicted upon your children. No, absolutely not. Uh, that was that was something that you know molded me, and luckily, like I kind of went the opposite way, opposite direction. Now I did start going down the wrong path mm -hmm. with gangs and stuff like that because I didn't have a positive role model. Yeah, my mom had a, a boyfriend of, of about 13, 14 years, so he kind of like was the role model in my my home. Mm -hmm. uh, but he himself was a drug dealer, and so that's what I grew up seeing the demographics and all the bad stuff that he was getting into and yeah. I got to see the inside of the whole operation yeah and so um, I had a decision to make pretty early yeah you know who was I gonna be yeah. was I gonna be him or was I gonna go chase this dream that I I came up with pretty quick yeah so I ended up turning me not having a father into something that fueled me yeah to be a better person yeah and want to take care of my my mom yeah but not I mean 98 percent of the people in my opinion probably go the other way yeah, there are a lot of people that do go the other way, and like, I, like my brother and sister were the same way, and uh, they didn't use it as fuel as as I did. They were kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum, mm -hmm. but I mean, it was, I mean, it's just it's just traumatizing. It's traumatizing yeah. for for any kid. Some of the problems that we see in our society are the direct result of bad government policy. The direct result of bad policy that takes place in these so-called family courts. The bad results of judges who, like Jeff Addison did, mm -hmm. made a decision that blows the mind of anybody who is familiar with the case. I would love to see, say, one day every quarter, maybe more if necessary, but at least one day every three months, that the courts shut down and that the people that they have put certain judgments upon or done what you've said that they would have to listen to the results of what they've done because a judge will do something and think that I've done my job and he'll go home and he can eat and everything else I followed the law and yet he has just created devastation in the lives of children mm -hmm. and you know I talk about adult children of divorce adult children of divorce are now starting to speak out to say you thought divorce was going to be so great for us and everything and it hasn't been we experienced hell in our lives you talk about the the, the issue about not feasting with your dad you know you turned it to a positive but you have a brother and a sister that did not mm -hmm. and I think that um, a lot of these things we need to have a more, much more open and frank discussion about our state policy should be that we would want to strengthen families mm -hmm. and forget about the money. Forget about saying we are going to maximize Title IV-D funding in our Texas Family Code 201.107 Section C. This is what it says. This is what a judge should do. And this is what our state has bragged about. Our state for the last 12, 13 years has been the leading collector of Title IV D funds in America. And if you listen to uh, both Attorney General Paxton and Governor Abbott when he was the Attorney General, they would brag about this stuff. Now, personally, I think that the Attorney General Paxton is trying to help in some of these things. He has a job to do, I understand that. But he's issued some opinions that I think we can use to tar start to take this apart. And I may be wrong. Um, I don't know where exactly he stands, but I do know that um, our system of government is creating trauma. It's creating a lot of these problems that we claim to be having to solve down the road. Governor Abbott last uh, year talked about the violence. We need to stop the gun violence. Well, when you look at mass shooters, uh, you know, it used to be, and I'm not sure what the updated figure is, but 26 out of the 28 mass shootings that took place came about from a boy who was brought up in a fatherless family. They will never talk about that. And well, he, he was involved with drugs. Well, do you think that maybe, what do you think came first? The drugs or the fatherless family? Right. The fatherless family that led to the drug dependency or the drug addiction 
and, and abuse and therefore led to this other thing. Right. And it's very hypocritical, I think, of our state to talk about the effects without looking at what they may have done to contribute to those things. Right. And then when I, when I left that hearing on Thursday, I asked myself, how, how does that, that man sleep at night? Yeah. Like, Judge Addison, I, I, I don't know how he could go to sleep at night hearing that hearing and ruling what he did. Yeah. And, and he didn't look like he was going to lose any sleep. Yeah. He actually threatened me before I left. <laughs> he said, if you don't go by these papers, I'll find two parents who can't, who will. So he wasn't taking the children away from both parents. Both parents. He said, and he, and he looked at me and he said, any parents. I'll find two, two, any two parents that will follow this order. Do you have a transcript of the hearing? Was there a transcript of the hearing? There was a transcript. I, I asked my lawyer to get it this morning. Okay. I would love to see it. If you get it, it usually comes in a PDF. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you have to pay for it. I'm not sure why we should have to pay. 800 bucks you got to pay for. Yeah. I, I went through <laughs> a hearing that I had to pay 1200 bucks for, but I will tell you what. That transcript buried, buried any false accusations. It, it illustrated the perjury that took place. Right. And you know what? I have it forever. But why should I have to spend $12,000 or $1,200 to get something like this? I think that we need to have audio recordings, mm -hmm. video recordings in the courtroom. I think that there should be another way that we could look at this is to say when the judge is making a ruling like this, there needs to be video and audio footage because mm -hmm. even if you read the transcript, you don't see the demeanor of the judge. Absolutely. You don't see the threats that he's making at the same time. And in a situation like your case, and you say, wait a minute, this judge did me wrong, mm -hmm. that there ought to be an, a, a, under a review that that judge would undergo. Yeah. And that, you know, maybe judge gets one strike, two strikes, three strikes, he's out. Yeah. And he's banned from and, ever being and a judge I, again. I, I think that, you know, they hold the highest seats in, in the land, yeah. but nobody's holding them accountable. Yeah. I mean, you, you have all these, these laws in place for all the rest of the, the rest of the citizens yeah even in the sports <laughs> yeah yeah i mean you have you know the ultimate reviews now yeah. like you know to go back and make sure you get it right yeah if we're going to make sure we get it right in something that genuinely doesn't matter yeah why are we not making sure we're getting it right in something that matters so much yeah that's very interesting a replay call on a football and, you know. and we want to, we want to make sure it gets right. We want to make sure we get that the right. Judges included. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We want to make sure it's right. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And, and 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 you know we don't hold the the court system to that same standard. In fact, they don't even want cameras in there. Yeah, that's right. That's absolutely correct. You'll sometimes see. Uh, now I've I've had some recordings from certain uh, court hearings, and um, one court that I went back to the next time I was there, they put up a special sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make sure. Like, yeah. they wouldn't let nobody bring purses, cell phones, nothing in there. So, what are they hiding? Is the question exactly? If, like you said, I mean, look at the Super Bowl was yesterday. I remember when the guy, you know, got the touchdown for the Chiefs, and they were wondering, mm -hmm. did, did the ball cross the line yeah. or not? Did he step out of bounds first? Yeah, yeah, you know, all of these different <laughs> things. Over what? A game. A game. I understand that there's a lot of fans, but you're talking about families. Right. You're talking about our children. Mm -hmm. And not only are the, the, the children and the parents affected, but what also happens then too is the children and the grandparents are affected. Mm -hmm. Or the children and the aunts and the uncles. Or, as you were mentioning earlier, perhaps even two brothers would be split. Right. Which would be disastrous for both of them. Terrible. So, um, you know, th that would be a good thing to have recordings in, in the courtroom as well.